Hey guys, and welcome to a battle between myself leading the forces of the High Elves and Alathanar up against Jesus, taking the forces of the Dowie led by the legendary White Dwarf himself. So let's get in here and uh, check out the build. So High Elves notoriously good up against the forces of the Dowie. They can come in with invisible nobles on chariots and all kinds of nastiness with the new white lines um, and all that kind of good stuff. But we're going to go traditional here and see if one of our old builds still holds weight. So for the front lines and protecting the flanks slightly we have five units of the white lines of chase these guys are just so goddamn cost effective up against dowie not only do they have a nice missile resistance they have decent ap as well and for their cost can go toe to toe with some of the best of the dowie warriors now in the secondary line here we do have double eagle claw bolt throwers they are going to be trying to snipe out enemy cannons bolt throwers and so forth and as we can see by my opponent's build he only has one artillery piece which isn't too common but can happen up against high elves if you don't want your backline harassed too much so these guys should be able to trade very very effectively just behind them we have a couple units of sword masters of hoef some of the best warriors the high elves have to offer fantastic swordsmen have a very expensive you don't get to see them in too many matchups unfortunately but against the dwarves is certainly some where they can shine with their huge armor piercing double wielded blades here but we're going to be keeping them a little bit further back than our main line in case there's any missile pressure coming in we have triple archers in the back line as well one of them is light armor but that was simply because i had the extra funds available these guys are fantastic at taking down the crews of artillery pieces as well as pinning in slayers and so forth we have a mage of shadows here as well coming in with both of his items which is going to be the Starwood Shaft, of course, and Book of Hoeth. Then we're going to be coming in with the Wyvern for that minus 30 armor. Pendulum, as yes, the Dowie do have uh, magic resistance, but still very tightly packed formations. It can certainly pack a punch and enfeebling foe as well, just to debuff the enemy. And for our Lord, we have the man, the myth, the legend, Alitha Nar himself here on foot with his glorious moonbow looking at very badass indeed. We are going to be bringing the moonbow item as well, so it does cause magic damage. However, it's a uh, you know, still pretty decent armor piercing magic missile, so I thought I'd bring it and try out anyway. We do have mislead. I'm going to be showcasing mislead a little bit today and why I think it's actually a very good ability despite the fact up against a uh, human opponent they should always realistically know you know which one's the dummy and which one's real we also have slippery as well as the stone of midnight to give us that 22 percent missile resistance and as you can see an orn gun is currently opening up on him so that missile resistance is certainly handy now for the forces of the dowie here and jesus he has long bits with great weapons dotted along the front line mixed in with some basic dwarf warriors as well so a nice sturdy front line i actually quite like the long beard with great weapon choice here they can go toe to toe with those nobles on chariots as well up against cavern so forth and can trade effectively up against most of the high elf infantry he has two units of slayers including the dragonback slayers who of course have that awesome slow as well as giant slayers with their two-handed axes very expensive but very good at dealing with those large threats he has one organ gun in the back now the organ gun can do fantastic work in this matchup it depends of course what your opponent does bring it's really going to struggle up against the double eagle claw bolt throw who are far better at sniping out artillery pieces but against chariots however the organ gun certainly does have a home he has some miners in the back line for protection as well as the grumbling guard regiment of renowned longbeards we have i believe it's just the one unit of thunderers i believe he had two yeah. Oh, there it is, hidden behind his lord. So yeah, two units of Thunderers do some decent long-range AP missile damage. We have a Runesmith coming in with two runes as well as the Hammer of Crack Draz, which is a very powerful ability here. Lowers melee attack and base weapon damage 40 and 30% there. Rune of Negation and Rune of Wrath and Rune, which is so key. And for his lord, he does have the White Dwarf himself, someone who's very good in this matchup because of his smoke bomb. He can pin in and slow down chariots with it very effectively. He has the Rune Axe as well as Grombridor has no fear. So I've told you, let's get this battle underway. So we are instantly going to be trying to snipe out the Orn Gun with our bolt throws where possible. Just trying to do that consistent damage and get them offline. I don't really want them to get any value at all. As for Alifar, he has pulled back a tiny bit here, just to sneak away from the approaching enemy front line. And he's going to be changing his sights. It looks like he is finding his magic missile, in fact, over on top of the clumped up Thunderers and Giant Slayers. Not getting too bad HP damage overall. Not killing too many of these guys, however. But he's now going to be sitting on top of that Runesmith all day with those long-range armor piercing shots. And does uh, quite a lot of decent damage overall. Looks like the Mage of Shadows is the current target of the Orn Gun, but... 
relatively small target. And what we've done here is we've popped up our missile lead, so our Alphanoid decoy. My opponent knows exactly who he is, but I'm going to switch him into combat mode and charge him directly at the enemy. It's going to bog down these Dwarf Warriors and slow down and also break up the formation of my opponent's advance as we do start to fall back with the white lines here, buying more and more time for our Eagle Claw bolt throws to take that own gun offline quite happily here. Archers are now unleashing some volleys as well, simply into the front line at the approaching enemy so far. And without shields, I suppose longbeards will be a slightly nicer target. Decoy unfortunately has been wiped out here, but it did manage to pin in those dwarf wars for a decent amount of time. White lines of chase as well are happy to charge into Grom Brindle. He's going to do a decent job up against them with withering pops on him. He should be taking a little bit of a pounding in retaliation as well. Slayers are starting to approach now, a little bit delayed. I think they wanted to protect the organ gun, but realistically, from the start of the battle, that organ gun was never going to be getting much of value, unfortunately. Sword Masters of Hover have been charging as well, just to try and carve up dwarf warriors. And in comes a pendulum down on top of these funders. Not the cleanest contact in the end, but my opponent did reposition here but still getting some okay damage overall and now the archers can simply push up and archers trade relatively effectively up against thunderers due to their range and the fact they can fight up and over the main melee can work wonders it looks like Wyvern is was still active there, but Enfeeble Info has been popped down on Grom Brindle. And you see his white lines are clearing them up relatively nicely, trading very effectively uh, health-wise here. There's some uh, minus from my opponent going on a very long decoy around the left hand flank. But this Runesmith getting very beaten out now by that consistent fire from Alephanar, down to about a third of his health. He's going to be helping the Grumbly Guard though up against some white lines, which should be a good engagement for them. Archer's doing some really decent work now, assisted by the bolt throws on top of these Thunderers. And Grom Brindle's still struggling to uh, break through these white lines of chase which is a bit unfortunate for them. Swordmasters easily clear up the Dwarf Warriors as expected. Alephanar taking the brunt of these Thunder of Fire but of course with that 22% uh, Missile resistance, he's going to be happy to take that all day. A lovely Moonbow shot coming in as well. Looks like it may well break these Thunderers. Yeah, minus 50 leadership here. Doing some fantastic value. And he's up to 44 kills despite the fact the majority of the game he has been targeting down at that Runesmith where possible. Both boat throwers have been left online now. And triple archers as well, just doing that consistent damage over the course of battle certainly helps. Over on this flank, long bids with great weapons trading relatively okay with white lines of chase. But these uh, warriors of the high elf are doing pretty decent damage. Back with those swinging arcing strikes from those axes going into those stunty little dwarfs. Gangback slaves have pushed up into the front line, but they need to be wrapping around to try and shut down this back line. We've popped our second Alephanar decoy here, and he's simply going to be running into the Thunderers to shut down their missile play for now. On the left-hand flank, the Dwarfs have managed to push through effectively, completely surrounding these poor white lions, who still did pretty decent here. Runesmith as well, almost completely gone now. Although the help of Giant Slayers, it did manage to put, push back the white lines. And my left hand flank has basically crumbled. But apart from that, we've managed to win the center pockets, pushing through rather effectively. And the right hand side as well is going very well. The Swordmasters have up to 87 kills. My opponent comes in with a nice rear charge with the Dragonback Slayers. But once again, we have double archers here just unleashing round after round into these naked dwarfs. So we're doing some fantastic value. So we reposition our backup Swordmasters of Hearth, who haven't even had to get into combat yet, over to the side as this side starts to look a little bit shaky so I'm moving them over here just to protect the back line if needs be. On the left hand flank some more giant slayers are finally pushing in to my eel claw bolt thrower. So what we're going to do here is simply wheel around both units of archers in the back here and start unleashing round after round to get some good value. Looks like the bolt thrower still trying to fight into Grom Brindle now knowing that the uh, all gun threat has been deleted. Swordmasters are finally going to push up. These guys are fresh and eager. They're charging into the much more knackered and very tired Longbeards and Grom Brindle. And that's just going to be a losing fight for the dwarfs all day here. The giant slayers do manage to pop onto the eagle claw bolt thrower. But I'm just going to be getting these guys and running for the hills while they take more and more archer fire. And these giant slayers have taken so much work so far. They haven't been able to reach the arch line by the looks of it. The crossfire should finish them off very effectively. And it looks like armor losses has set in with the white dwarf getting incredibly low. And the Dowie are starting to flee for the hills. So all that is left is some Dragonback Slayers. Having an Enfeebling Foe currently popped on them. Which isn't too good for those geezers. And one unit of Giant Slayers as well. So a nice victory there for us overall. We uh, didn't take too much damage off the bat. Yes, some of the white lines got pretty beat up, but we still have a full health unit of Swordmasters who have. Our Eagle Claw Bolt Throws never got shut down really until the very end, as well as our archers apart from this last unit. We're leaving in combat for now because we are simply finishing up the game here and wrapping stuff up. So we're going to fast forward here. So it looks like these Slayers are going to be fighting to the death. 
And that was a Pyrrhic victory for the High Elves. So let's go to the end stats there, guys, and have a brief overview of the build. So I really love this build. You can easily replace Alifanar with someone like Tyrion if you prefer a more combat-focused Lord. But it really is... It's everything I find that's very good against the Dwarfs, but players still do not expect it. Jesus was messaging me partway through the game, or towards the end there, when he was just kind of clinging on with his Slayer, saying he did not expect this at all. His build was much more prepared for the Double Noble, and he thought I might even bring a Dragon as well. And uh, Double Noble in particular, I'm not so sure about the Dragons, but... Uh, double Noble on Chariot with their special arm which can make them go stalk and unspottable is incredibly common because it's very powerful in this matchup. However, I want to play a little bit of mind games here and bring something slightly off meta while still bringing what I personally think are units fantastic up against the Dowie. So, Double E-Claw Bolt Thrower can easily out-trade multiple Dwarf artillery pieces. Occasionally though, your opponent may go mass gun line, in which case you will have to... Uh, you know, push forward a little bit, but because you have the triple archers, you can deal with those artillery pieces relatively effectively normally, and they tend to focus down your e-claw bolt throws as well, so you can approach the dwarf front line relatively uncontested. We do have a ton of white lines as well, as I said during the game, very cost effective for their, this matchup, and sword monsters as well, just a nice elite infantry. I quite like the Mage of Shadows because it gives you the ability to do damage whilst also neutering the armor of the dwarfs. And Alifanar is obviously not the most competitive pick in the world, but up against the Dwarfs is somewhere where he can really shine. 59 kills is no small feat, especially because he single-handedly pretty much killed the Runesmith, doing so much work and damaging to him over the course of the battle, and he can help you trade effectively as well up against those artillery builds. As for Jesus here, I uh, do like his build quite a bit. It's interesting to see the long beards with great weapons. I need to test out with them a little bit more. I don't use them too often myself. But I do like the Orn Gun as well as the White Dwarf pick. They can come in there and really shut down chariots, especially with the Runesmith combining his Rune of Wrath and Rune to slow them down, as well as the Hammer of Karak, uh, Karazak. Whatever that hammer ability is he has, which basically neuters their damage output completely for a really long period of time. But very fun game overall. Hope you guys did enjoy. If you did, please do consider giving the video a big old thumbs up and subscribing to the channel. We do all things Total War Warhammer at the moment. Some very exciting stuff has been uh, going on on the channel. We have tournaments, King of the Hills, replays, all of that good stuff. And if you want to get featured on top of the channel or in you know take part in any King of the Hills tournaments or just chat to a load of cool guys, Guys, feel free to join my Discord. There's a link just down below, as well as a link to my Patreon account. Anyway, guys, until next time, peace, peace, and as always, stay awesome.